Are you interested in learning how to make your own Discord bot? How to code it, how to add it to your server, and how to make it interact and have fun with your friends? Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you in this series here. I'm going to be covering everything from setting up the bot to cool, fun, advanced features like you get in all the modern bots nowadays. I'm going to be showing you how you can code and program all of that in Python in this series, so stay tuned for that. Hi friends, it's James, and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry, I know I've been gone a while, but don't worry, I'm back now. Back for good and bringing you some great content. Today I'm going to be guiding you through a new Discord bot series. I know I had one in the past, but that's all outdated and the code's no longer relevant nowadays. There's so many different libraries and different techniques and it, all of that stuff's outdated. This is now a new updated version to get you up and running with creating a Discord bot. So as I said, this is our first episode in creating a Discord bot. And I'm going to be showing you how you can set up your bot with Discord, how you register with it, and how you write some beginner code to get it to interact with your server. I'm going to be explaining everything, and by the end of this video, you'll fully understand how it works. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's create our own Discord bot and add it to the server. So, what we're going to first do is we're going to first head over to the Discord developer portal to register and create our bot. So let's do this. So let's head to your browser. And when you're in your browser, you can head over to Google and you're going to search for Discord Developer Portal. You're going to go ahead and click on the first link here, which is going to bring you to a page which looks very similar to this. And it's going to ask you to log in. You want to go ahead and log in with your Discord account. And when you've logged in, it will bring you to a page that looks like this. However, your page, if it's your first time logging into the developer portal, won't have any applications at all. These are just past examples of applications I've created. So it might have a blank page with like a big button in the middle saying like new application or something around those lines. I'll leave a link in the description for this website so you can easily get to it. But either way, wherever the button is on your screen, you want to come across and click the new application button up here. Essentially, what an application is, think of it as just like a home for your Discord bot, where your Discord bot is going to live. And we just need to create this application inside of Discord. So, we're going to go ahead and give it a name. This name you give it doesn't have to be the name of your Discord bot, but it makes sense to. It's probably easiest if you give it the name of your Discord bot. So, in the purpose of this, I'm going to give it the name Developer. You're going to go ahead and agree, make sure you're happy with all the policies. Once you've agreed, go ahead and click Create. Give it a few seconds and it's going to bring you here into your application. This is really cool. We've already completed a few of the steps that we needed to create our Discord bot. So we've not actually created our bot yet. As I said, we've only created essentially the home of a Discord bot. What we need to do is we need to actually create the bot itself. So what you want to do is come over on the left here to where it says bot. And you can see here we're in the build a bot section. And here it will bring you to a default template of what your bot is. So you can see here, I've just been assigned a green um, Discord icon, which will represent the icon of my bot. And you can see here that it's given my username of developer to my bot with its tag here. So as I said, you can go ahead and change it here if you wanted to. However, I'm going to keep it with developer. So as I said, if you named your application a different name, you could change the name of your bot here. If, that's, if you're happy with the name, that's all good. You can also upload an image for what your bot's profile icon will be here, if that's what you want to do. You can also upload a banner if you're, you want a, bot, a banner for your bot. Again, I'll leave that all up to you. That's fully up to you of what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to scroll down here and you can see here there's loads of different settings available for your bot. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable these three um, intents down here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and enable each one. Enable, enable, and enable, and click Save Changes. Essentially, what these do is just allow your bot to interact with your server. You're essentially giving your permission for your bot to be able to read stuff in your server. So, for example, be able to read the message, to be able to find out information about your members, and so on. It just allows your bot to communicate with your server. And then what you need to do is you need to go ahead and give your bot administrator purpose. This will allow your bot to do everything you want in the server. If you want, you could give your bot specific um, permissions so it doesn't access everything. For example, you might only want your bot to be able to view the audit log for the server. And then all you do is just give your bot that specific permission. However, the case of this bot and this whole series, if you give it administrator privilege, it will allow your bot to do everything that we want to do in this series that I'm showing you, as well as have no complications when your bot's trying to interact with your server. So if you're happy, leave it at administrator. And that's all you need to do. That's everything that we need to change with inside of this bot section in the developer portal. And with that, our bot is already set up which is so exciting. We could actually go ahead and add our bot to our server, which is very cool. I want to point out one thing here on this page, which is the token. This is how our code talks to our bot. 
This is an essentially a unique number, which is completely unique to our bot. What we're going to do is we're going to put it inside of our code, in our Python code when we write it, which I'll show you when we do that. And essentially what it does is when we run our Python script, it will essentially go to Discord and say, this is the bot we're writing the Python code for, please link these two together. Hopefully that makes sense. So we'll come back to that when we write the code. But bear this in mind that we'll be coming back to this token. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the bot to our Discord server. So we want to get a URL to add our bot to the server. So how do we do this? Well, what you want to do is come ahead and go over to OAuth2. Then you want to come down to the generator. This, this is essentially going to generate a link for our bot. We're going to go ahead and just click the bot icon here. When you come down and then for bot permissions, you want to click administrator. Or if you chose um, different permissions for your bot when we were creating it on the other screen, go ahead and match it to these permissions here. And then what you have here is you have a unique link for to add your bot to your Discord server. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click the copy button here and then go to a new tab in your browser and paste it in and it will bring you to a page here. It's going to ask you to sign in if you haven't already. And as you can see here, which is really cool, it's saying the bot we just created, so in my case, developer, which server do I want to add it to? So in my case, I'm going to add it to my development server. And then what I'm going to do, all you're going to do is just go ahead and click continue. And then it's going to say here, do you want to allow the bot with administrator privileges to join your Discord server? You're all fine with that. If you're all good with that, go ahead and click authorize. And look at that, it's been added to the server. So let's go to Discord and have a look. And look at this, I'm inside of my developer server and look, you can see here, I've got a new bot. Good to see you developer. And if we have a look in our members list, you can see here that my bot developer is now in the server and your bot should now be in your server too. But you might be wondering, oh, the bot's offline. Why is it offline? Haven't we just added it? Well, that's just because we've not run our Python scripts yet. The way it works is, is when you run your Python script, your bot comes online because it's got a script that's running for it. So we're what we're going to do now is we're going to go build out our script in Python. And when we run it, our bot will come online. So we'll come back to this in a second. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do some coding in Python. We're going to write some basic code for our bot. So you want to open up an application in which you can write some Python code. If you're on Windows, you can write it in Notepad if you wanted to. Or if you've got an IDE installed, um, you can use one of those. In my case, I'm using Visual Studio Code. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to install Visual Studio Code. Essentially, all Visual Studio Code is, is essentially it's just an application in where it makes it very easy for you to write some code. So yes, you just need a place in where you can write some code for your bot. So you want to create a new file, give it the name main.py and open it up in some sort of text editor or IDE, whatever is easiest for you. And great, we're nearly there. So to write some Python code that will talk to our Discord bot, we need to import a module which will essentially take our Python code, go to the Discord server and give it to our bot, essentially. And we're gonna install a package called discord.py. And what discord.py is, is just a sort of Python library that someone else has written, which just allows us to talk to the Discord server. So what we have to do is we have to install it on our computer. So what you want to do is you want to open up your terminal. You can open up your terminal by going to the Windows search if you're on Windows and typing in terminal. If you're on an operating system like Mac OS, the same, go to the search type terminal and you want to open up the terminal. I just want to point out for us to be able to use Discord PY, you need to make sure you have Python installed on your computer. And you need to make sure that you have a Python version of 3.8 or higher. So to find out in your terminal, what you can do is you can just type Python free dash dash version. And you can see here I have 3.8.10. So my version of Python is high enough for us to be able to use discord.py. If you've got a version which is less than 3.8 um, or you don't have Python installed at all, go ahead and install Python on your computer. You could do that through the Windows Store by just searching Python installing 3.10 or whatever the latest version is. Or you could do it from the internet or if you're on an operating system like Mac OS or Linux, you could do it from a terminal. But I'll leave some links in the description if you need some help installing Python. But I'm going to assume now you've got Python all installed on your computer and you've got a version which is higher than 3.8. So now what we want to do is we want to install Discord PY onto our computer. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and type Python 3-m pip install dash capital U Discord py and click enter it's going to go ahead and load and it's going to go ahead and install discord.py and as you can see here it's i'm um, installing discord.py and look there we go 
it has now successfully installed discord.py as you can see here. So hopefully that worked for you. And now you have discord.py installed on your computer, which is great because that means we can now go ahead and write some code. So you wanna come ahead back to your IDE or wherever you're writing your code. And we're gonna actually get writing some code, which is very exciting. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just write some very basic code that allows our bot to run. And it's just gonna print a message saying it's running and it's connected to the Discord server. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first import Discord PY that we just installed. So to do this, we're gonna type import, and we're gonna type Discord. That has now imported the Discord PY that we just installed. Then we wanna create a class. And this class we're gonna just call is we're gonna just call it client. So class client, I'm gonna open the brackets and then type discord.client, like that. And then inside of this class file, we're gonna write our first Python function. So what we're gonna do is go type async def on underscore ready, self in brackets, and then ending that function declaration. Essentially, I'll quickly explain what we've done. We've just created a class, which is pulling in this discord.client. This just is essentially um, how the bot runs. Think of it like that. And then what we're doing is creating a function which is called onReady. And onReady is a predefined function inside of Discord PY. So this function it will be called whenever the bot turns on. Whenever we run our Python code, this onReady function will run when our bot has connected to the Discord server. And inside of this onReady function, we're gonna write a print statement. Print, we're gonna print that it's connected to the server successfully. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write an F string. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna say logged on as, and then we're gonna do self.user. And essentially what this is doing is it is essentially going to print to the terminal saying logged on as and then the name of the bot to, just to show that it's working. So in my case, when we run this, it should do logged on as developer or I, I think that's what I call it, whatever I call it. Essentially, it should be logged on as and then your bot name. And that's it. We've created our first ever function for our Discord bot, which is really cool. And now that, that's not it. If we were to run this code, this wouldn't work. What we need to do is we need to write a few other lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We could type intents is equal to discord.intents.default. Open and close brackets. Then we're going to write intents.message underscore content is equal to true. Essentially, what Visa is doing is, if you remember back to when we were in um, Discord Developer Portal, and I said we had to enable those three intents in the bot page, that's essentially what this is saying here. It's we're just essentially using the default intents, and we're just allowing it to uh, access that essentially. But you don't, you really don't need to worry about what this is doing. Um, and then this is the fun bit: is we get to run our bot. So to do this, we type client is equal to client which here is the same name as this class, which we just created. So client, open and close brackets, intents is equal to intents. And then we, all we could do is we can just do client dot run, open and close brackets. Essentially what we're doing here is we're essentially, we're running our bot by passing in our function. And all we're doing is passing in these intents, which we allow this permission inside of this class. So this function here is able to access all of these intents. Hopefully that makes sense. And essentially rewritten all the codes that would get our bot to run. The only thing that's missing is our, is our unique token. This token is the token that I was talking to you about on the developer portal page. It's that unique thing that connects our code to our, our developer bot or whatever your bot's name is called. So we want to get that token. So if you go back to that developer portal page, it was this page here. We're going to go ahead and click the reset token button. And it's saying your bot will stop working. That's fine because we've not actually used our token yet. So just that's fine. Just go ahead and click yes, do it. And it's going to ask you for, if you have multi-factor authentication on your Discord account, it's going to ask you to enter a code. So give me a second while I quickly fill that out. And if you have something similar, you do the same. And look, you can now see that it's generated you a new token. Mine's blurred out, but you'll have a token here. Just go ahead and click copy and then head back to where you're writing your Python code. So, and then you wanna go ahead and just paste it inside of this. Brilliant. That's it. We've now written all of our code to run our Discord bot. So you wanna save your file. 
And now all we need to do to get our bot to run is to run it from the terminal. So if you open up the terminal and then you navigate to the directory in where this file is stored. So as you can see here in my terminal, I'm in my coding folder, YouTube tutorial, Discord bot. That's the directory where this file is stored. So to run our bot, all we want to do is type python. Oh, I cannot spell today. Python3 main.py, which is the name of our Python file, which we gave. And when we click enter here to run it, it should hopefully run our Discord bot. And hopefully we've not made any typing errors when we're coding this bot. And look, you can see here we've already got an invalid syntax because I've accidentally put a plus at the end here. Oops, let's run this again and fingers crossed it will work. And look at this, we run it and it's connected. It's printed out some default uh, Discord like um, developer logs, um, which they give us. But as you can see, look here, logged on as developer and then my bot tag, which is exactly what we said here in this print statement. It works, your bot has now running. And look at this, if we head to Discord, look at this, in the corner here, our bot is online. How cool is that? You've created your first ever Discord bot and it's online and running in your server. How cool is that? However, you might be thinking that's not a lot that our bot does. Yes, it's great that you've got it running in your server, but it's not actually doing much. So you know what? Let's do something cool. Let's write a tiny bit of code which allows your bot to, when it detects a message, it will print it out, which is really cool. So let me show you how you do this. So what we're going to do is back in where you're writing your code, you're going to first stop get your bot from running. So just stop the terminal from where your bot's running. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new function. So async def. And we're going to give this function name on underscore message. And this is a, as well a function that is already predefined. So when a message is sent in the server, this function is called. In this case, we're going to pass in self and message. And then what we're going to do is we're going to Inside of the function, we're going to just write a print statement. We're going to do print. We're going to do an f string. And inside of this f string, we're going to write this. We're going to do message from. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do squiggly brackets message.author. And what we're also going to do is print the contents of the message. And to do that, we just do squiggly brackets again message.content. Closing squiggly brackets. And now we've written that function. So what will happen now is when we run our code, whenever a message is sent, it will print, our bot will print it down here in the terminal, which is really cool. So let's show, let me show you this. Let, let's save it. And if we rerun our bot, you can see here that our bot's now logged in. And if we head to our Discord server, let's write a message. So I'm just going to type hello there. I'm going to send it. And you might be wondering, our bot's not responded, but that's because we didn't write it to do anything here. We got it to respond inside of a terminal. It's going to print something in the terminal there. So if we head back to the terminal, look at that. Our bot has detected that we've written a message. It's written message from the craziest boy, which is my username. And it's, and it's taken the message that I sent and printed it in the terminal, which is so cool. You've now got your bot to detect messages and print it down, which is so cool. Your bot now does something. But that now brings us to the end of this video. But you might be thinking, oh, my bot isn't actually doing anything that exciting. But don't worry, that's what this series is all about. By the end of this series, your bot is going to be incredible. It's going to be built out like one of all the most professional built bots. And in our next episode, episode two of the series, I'm going to be showing you how you can get your bot to reply to messages in the server, which is going to be really cool. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. And if you have, please do consider subscribing and giving this video a like. And it will really help me out. But that's everything for me. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. See you later.